welcome. So, we would like to develop the analog of Fourier series on the finite group what we are looking at z n and towards uh, this what we have observed one of the fundamental properties to deal with the Fourier uh, series is uh, basically uh, e to the power i n theta which are orthonormal and uh, then they are nothing but a homomorphism uh, from uh, the identified uh, with the periodicity of the 0 to 2 pi to mod 1 complex number. And in fact, it is a continuous homomorphism. So, to do the Fourier analysis in the last lecture, we have defined the function phi n of j. This is equal to e to the power 2 pi i j n over n. So, uh, where n varies over 0 to n minus 1. Then what we have observed is that with the inner product on the space of all functions on j d n, we had defined and we found that phi k phi j this is equal to 1 by n if k is equal to j and 0 otherwise. So, now if uh, this is uh, if I take f e k f e k this by our notation this is equal to norm of f e k square this is equal to 1 over n this will imply that f e k 1 by square root of n. Uh, oh sorry there is a, a slight mistake which is equal to I get n and then this is n and this is square root of n. Now, if we normalize this let us call it as E star of j is equal to 1 over square root of n phi j then one can see that proposition E j star is an orthonormal basis for V. And uh, th this is uh, of course, what we have uh, now what we need to show is uh, the proof is obviously now E j star E k star which is equal to 1 over n phi j phi k and this is equal to 1 if k is equal to j and 0 otherwise. So, therefore, this is an orthonormal. Now, in order to do uh, to see that this is a basis, of course, we are 0 to n minus of 1. The moment we show that they are linearly independent, then they are going to be a basis because we have already seen that uh, V has uh, uh, dimension n, capital N. Therefore, here linearly and linearly independent they will form the basis. Now, so towards this end let 0 is equal to summation over j uh, from 0 to n minus of 1 alpha j e j star. Then what we want to show that alpha j's are 0 that is trivial. So, because if we take the summation over j from 0 to n minus 1 alpha j e j star and I take the inner product with e k star then this what I am going to get is summation j from 0 to n minus of 1 alpha j e j star e k star and that is if 
this will only survive if j is equal to k and that is going to give us 1. So, therefore, this is alpha k and this is definitely 0 because 0 with the inner product with anything is 0. So, alpha k is 0 this is for each k hence E j star j from 0 to n minus of 1 are linearly independent. Okay, so, that means they are the orthonormal basis for this. So, now the most two important result in the Fourier series what we have seen they are inversion formula and the plans Percival identity. Now, so now towards that let us recall if f is from z n to c define f k to be 1 over n summation over n from 0 to n minus of 1 f of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by uh, n. This is, uh, is the Fourier transform uh, Fourier coefficient of f what we had defined. So, now if I look at f inner product of E j star, then this is going to be 1 over this is summation over n from 0 to n minus 1 f n E j star n bar this is equal to 1 by square root of summation over n from 0 to n minus n minus 1 f n e to the power minus 2 pi i j n by n. Okay. So, now this this one is nothing but square root of n f of j. So, with this observation let us write down the inversion f be a function from z n to c, then 1 is that f of n, this is equal to summation over k from 0 to n minus of 1 f of k e to the power 2 pi i k n by n and then the second thing is that which one would like to have the Percival identity this is nothing but the inversion f k square this is equal to 1 by n. f of n square. Okay. So, this is nothing but the Percival identity. So, we can collect all the observation what we have uh, observed over here. So, 
So, now proof f belongs to v, this implies that f is equal to summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 alpha j e j star because they are orthonormal basis. So, I can express this. Now, what about this alpha j? So, this alpha j is going to be nothing but if I take uh, the inner product with that uh, alpha. Okay. So, now if I take the f inner product of e k star, then this is going to be summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 alpha j e j star e k star this is equal to alpha k. So, therefore, f is equal to summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 inner product of f e j star and e j star. Now, earlier what we have calculated that uh, uh, the inner product of f e j star is nothing but summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 square root of n f j and then e j star e j star I can write it as 1 by square root of n e to the power uh, 2 pi i j uh, this is e j star f of n I will write this is as n. So, this is j n by n. So, now square root of n goes out. So, what you get is that j equal to 0 to n minus of 1 capital F j e to the power 2 pi i j n by n. Okay, so, that is what we have got is uh, the inversion formula. Now, for the Percival identity for the proof of 2, so if I take n from 1, 0 to n minus of 1 mod of capital F n square, so this is equal to by our earlier calculation is going to be 1 by n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus 1 F e n star mod square because 1 by square root of n that is what we have got. So, now this. So, this is equal to 1 over n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 and mod of summation over j is equal to 0 to n minus of 1 and because I am going to write the inner product. So, this is going to be f of j e j star e n star mod square. Again, the orthogonality orthonormality of e j star this is going to give that this inner sum this is is going to survive only when j is equal to n otherwise this is going to be 0. So, therefore, this is n is equal to 0 to n minus of 1 mod of f of n square and that is what is our Percival identity. Okay, so, now we are all set to do the Fourier series because we have the most important results in the finite group particular finite group z n. Okay, so, then one can have a corollary let g of n is equal to f 1 of n into f 2 of n, where 
f 1, f 2, g, this uh, all these are mapped from z n to c. Then the Fourier coefficient of this g, we denote it by capital G, g of k, this is equal to if the Fourier coefficient of f 1 is capital F 1 convolution of f 2, which is the Fourier coefficient of small f 2, this is at k. This is uh, the proof. Uh, Let us just write down g of k, this is equal to 1 by n summation over j is equal to 0 to n minus of 1 g of j e to the power 2 pi i minus 2 pi i j uh, k divided by n. Now, we will plug in the value of g j k by n. Now, we have the inversion formula with us. So, this will tell that this is n minus of 1. If I am writing the inversion formula here, this is going to be L is equal to 0 to n minus 1 f 1 of L e to the power 2 pi i L j by n then f f 2 of j e to the power minus 2 pi i j k by n. This 1 by n, if I take the sum L sum out, n minus 1 f 1 of L to summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 f 2 of j and e to the power Uh, 2 minus of 2 pi i, this is j, if I take common, then this is k minus of l divided by n. And this is nothing but with the factor of 1 by n, this becomes the Fourier transform, Fourier coefficient of small f 2. So, this is l equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f 1 of L, f 2 of k minus of L and that is what is our definition of the convolution. So, also what we have seen earlier is that let f be the Fourier coefficient of f 1 convolution of f 2 and uh, f 1 and f 2 Fourier coefficient of f 1 and f 2 respectively. then f of k, this is equal to f 1 of k into f 2 of k, this we have seen. And so, now other way around also because of the inversion formula just now we have seen is that if the Fourier, if the function is the product of two function, then their Fourier coefficient they are nothing but the convolution. Okay. So, now uh, let us uh, do, uh, suppose I, I have uh, a function, let us for example, I have a function f from z 2 to c and 
g from z4 to c. Then what is going to be the relationship between the Fourier coefficient uh, of g vis a vis f? So, does there exist and now this I need to define it. Uh, suppose if g of this is z4 is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and this is equal to 0 and 1. Now, if I define my g of 0, this is equal to f of 0, g of 1, this is equal to uh, 0, g of 2, this is equal to f of 1 and g of 3, this is equal to 0. Then what is going to be the relationship? Can we find between g and f? Okay, so, in general what we can uh, in general what we can ask for is that uh, let if we want to uh, ask this question uh, for any arbitrary uh, n and n then let capital M is the product of two non negative integer two natural number and my f I am taking a function from z n by m to c that means m prime to c. Now, we define this in this way if I want to define define g of n this is equal to f of n by m if n is equal to 0 plus or minus m plus or minus 2 m whatever uh, remember that if m 2 m 3 m. So, this is divisible by m and now uh, uh, so obviously, I can uh, go suppose 4 or 5 then z 4 then 5 is going to correspond 4 is going to correspond to uh, 0 5 is going to correspond to 1 so on and so forth. So, I can define for all n like this because it is going to fall back with the sum modulo and then 0 otherwise. Then the question is that compute g in terms of the Fourier coefficient of f and this is what we are going to derive in the next lecture. Thank you.